Hey, it's Helder here. I'm out here in one of my favorite places, just enjoying nature and uh, playing with a new toy of mine. This is actually a shepherd's sling that I picked up from Survival Life. And uh, shepherd's slings have been around forever. Uh, nobody even really knows truly when the origin was. Uh, they're mentioned in biblical uh, times with David and Goliath, all the way up to modern day armies that are still using them to be able to propel grenades at longer distances. Uh, I became aware of the shepherd's sling as a young child, not only through the Boy Scouts, but even before that, uh, with my uh, ancestors that are from Portugal. And they explained to me how the shepherds out there would use them to keep the uh, wolves away, uh, wild boar away from their sheep, and even goats and things of that nature, and uh, even used during uh, skirmishes uh, against the Moors. So what I want to do today is just basically share a little bit about its application. This one's already pre-made, which is nice, saves you a ton of time, and know that it's done well. But as always, especially as uh, people focused on preparedness, always a good idea to familiarize yourself and know how to make these out of power cord in a pinch. But for today's tutorial, I'm just going to show you how to utilize this one. So let's get started. All right, so as I mentioned earlier, this uh, shepherd sling is already pre-made, but what we're looking for is basically a wingspan length or your arm span length. So you can tell this one's good to go, pretty much goes side to side. And now what you want to do, or what I did, is went ahead and tied a two half hitch to one end and an overhand knot on the other end. Now what I do here with this two half hitch is it cinches down. And I wanted to be able to cinch down around my index finger right behind the knuckle and I like to cinch that down a bit. Once again, I use a two half hitch, taut line hitch, whatever hitch you want to do, as long as it cinches down. I seem to uh, feel that that's, that works best for me. Once again, this is all about sharing my opinion. There's other people out there that want to use different fingers, want to use different knots. That's great, that works for them. You need to find what works for you. The purpose of these tutorials is to explore and kind of get an orientation or a basic starting point. Then from there, you need to own it and make it yours. So use other, people, other people's opinions to get started and then make sure with your experience, you're able to form your own. So for this purpose, I'm sharing with you what works best for me. So uh, let's continue on with the tutorial. Now, as far as the projectiles, okay, or your ammunition, uh, we're out in the field, rocks are all over the place. Of course, an emergency situation, whatever you have on you, uh, depending on the mission and how important whatever you're trying to do with your sling is to you, because a lot of times we don't wanna go into our gear and start using our fishing weights, so on and so forth. And then when we need to fish, we might not have them. So for the purposes of today's tutorial, we're using rocks. So what I found out here, I'm kind of limited, but I really like these uh, round ones that are smooth. They're more aerodynamic. They'll work better with you. But unfortunately out here, there's more of this type of gravel uh, for what I've been using today. But once again, use what's in your environment uh, and uh, be careful also what you leave out there. I've seen a lot of people using uh, golf balls and things like that and then they end up leaving these golf balls all out here on these beautiful trails which is uh which is definitely a no-go well, always remember to leave no trace and leave it better than you found it all right so that's my little disclaimer for today so what we're doing here is basically in this little saddle of your shepherd sling you're going to go ahead and put your projectile all right in this case be in this rock and that's really what we're looking for here from there we have our hitch that's tied up on top and the overhand knot that I'm holding with my two fingers here on the bottom. Want to make sure that everything is kind of loose. And keep in mind now that there are various methods, just like we spoke before. All right, some people like more of a figure eight. Some people are kind of lassoing above the head and throwing it. For me, I kind of just like to aim out there and go with my natural motion, since this isn't something that I do every day. But I have thrown a baseball. I have thrown a football considerably so if I could work with that natural movement it's going to bode better for me to be able to acquire this skill than once again trying to completely change my biomechanics to move like someone else so it's a lot more uh, efficient to try and move like me all right so once again just demonstrating what I was just talking about always remember to warm up all right because once again you cause a lot of tension you'll throw out your arm in no time and then really get not get that much practice in all right so get that little warm up in loosen up your shoulders loosen up your elbows and once again, I'm just pinching that end. And what I'm kind of doing is almost aiming, just like if I had a firearm, all right, just kind of sighting in, closing one eye, aiming it onto the target. You kind of get the idea. Now, the figure eight motion, which doesn't work really well for me, but I've seen it work incredibly well for other people. All right, and what you're really doing is just kind of getting that centripetal force from that figure eight motion, and then from there, letting it go. What I would utilize this for is if I am launching something, 
we spoke about earlier how some armies use it for launching grenades right so uh if i do want to throw it if i try to throw up my arm it's not going to go very far with this one i could probably get 300 feet you know maybe 300 meters you know who knows depending on the weight we want to make sure that these uh projectiles ideally are kind of the size of a golf ball maybe a little bit smaller and also that same amount of weight because the lighter it is the the worse it's going to bode for you okay so for practice purposes, practice with everything because you never know what you're going to find or, or have available during an emergency si situation. But for ideal practice, kind of follow the guidelines that I stated earlier. So we have our target here. As you can tell, we did get a uh, few little key hits. Not too shabby. So, never as easy as it looks. And uh, just think about it, this wasn't an emergency. I'm not hungry, I'm not scared, I'm not cold. And uh, still wasn't an easy task. Uh, once I got warmed up a little bit, I was able to hit a little bit more uh, accurately. But uh, definitely not a skill set that I would count on uh, for a uh, survival situation. Not yet. But uh, knowing that, I will definitely get out there and practice. And uh, hopefully this enlightened you a little bit or shared some experience uh, to uh, guide you into your personal practice. As I mentioned earlier, just like any other skill, this needs to be practiced and needs to be maintained for it to be effective. Once again, this is Helder. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial.